Guys, I promise that this video is going to be pretty quick. Uh, we're doing Unit 5B, Lesson 6, our writing inequalities. Our targets are I can write an inequality to represent a real-world situation. And I can explain why my inequality is appropriate for a real-world situation. We talked a lot about defining the variable, about what it is and what it should not be. But this is the first time we're actually going to go through and give you a definition. So defining a variable is explaining... in words what the variable represents. So if we were to give an example of that, we would say um, C equals cloudy days during the week. or L equals lost money, anything along those lines. So it tells you exactly what that variable means, like what does it represent. Now a variable can represent any possible number, but what is that label for that number? What it is not is C equals 5. It's not just a random number. It's not the solution. All right. So what we're going to focus on today is taking our vocabulary and pulling all of that from our word problem. So in actual English, since Mr. Jonathan had a brain fart there, you must be at least 48 inches tall to ride the roller coaster. So when we look at that, <clears throat> what words or phrases would tell us which inequality it would be? So if we look, at least 48 inches tall to ride the roller coaster. So Mrs. Heisler might not be able to ride that roller coaster, but everyone else above 48 inches will be able to. So as we look, that at least 48 inches tells us that it has to be greater than or equal to 48. One of the big questions you want to ask yourself is... Can it equal that number? So, when I say at least, that means I can be 48 inches tall. So, Mrs. Heisler barely makes it on the top of that roller coaster. So, so you need to be 48 inches or taller. <clears throat> Our variable is H equals the height. And our inequality is H is greater than or equal to 48. So when we talk about please bring no more than $20 on our field trip, underline, circle important words, see if you can define what your variable is, tell me what inequality sign that you're going to use, and go from there. In our words, no more money than $20. Our variable is M for money. You might have done something different. You could have done the dollar sign, <clears throat> C for cash, whatever it is that you want to do. So our inequality is going to be less than or equal to M for money, and $20. It can be equal to because you says no more than. Right. So if we were to graph these situations, like x is greater than 4, y is less than 10, m is greater than or equal to 15, q is less than or equal to 30, and 5 is less than x. We do that on a number line with an either an open dot or a closed dot and an arrow. So whenever we have less than or greater than, it's going to be an open dot. So up here we can write 
less than or greater than is an open dot. Less than or equal to or greater than or equal to is a closed dot. <clears throat> so if we look at x is greater than 4, 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I have an open circle around 4. And if it's greater than, my arrow is going to go to the right. For here, y is less than 10. I'm going to have an open circle and the arrow going to the left. Greater than or equal to or less than or equal to are closed dots. So we put a closed dot at 15, an arrow going to the right. It's a closed dot because it tells us that it can be 15. It doesn't mean that it can't be 15. It means that it can be 15. It's an open circle because that means it does not include that number. We have a closed dot at 30 and an arrow going to the left. Go ahead and complete this last one really quickly and we'll go from there. Ready? Go. All right, we have 5 is less than x. If we flip that around, that's the same thing as x is greater than 5. So it's an open dot with a line going to the right. So we have open open, close, close, open. All right. Good luck.